This recipe here is the one that helped me continue to be vegan. Say you talk to 10 people whose diet is strictly plant-based and you ask them, what is that one food that you miss or yearn the most since going plant-based? It's gonna be like Family Feud. The top answer is gonna be cheese. And that's like one out of two possible answers on the board. What's incredible about this recipe is that it's free of almost everything that are top allergens. Dairy, soy, wheat, eggs, nuts, commercials. But what tops the incredible is its taste, which is just marvelous. I have fooled family members with this recipe, not on purpose. Okay, you got me, it was completely on purpose. But the point is that it's good and requested and loved by various diets. The recipe base is butter beans, and it's not because we're looking for more protein, although it's kind of nice that it's in there. Butter beans are creamy, sort of like cashews when you blend them, which help influence that lie that it's cheese to your taste buds. You could swap this with any other white bean, except for chickpeas, because then you're gonna have like a cheesy hummus which now that I think of it, actually sounds pretty good. The plant-based butter in the dish also helps with that smoothness and the taste, but if you're oil-free, certainly leave it out. The non-dairy milk I choose is something creamy, like a soy milk or maybe even like an oat milk. And that's when I want it to be like a thicker sauce. But if I want something a little smoother, maybe pourable, I go with like an almond milk. Just remember to make sure it's flavorless. I made like a vanilla one one time. And um, right, let's not talk about it. The oat flour can be swapped with any other flour, depending on the thickness that you desire. Keep in mind, flours like wheat need to be heat treated. So choose something like an almond or chickpea flour. I know I said any before, but I would stay away from like a coconut flour for a recipe like this one. Outside of all the ingredients, you need two important things. Five minutes in a solid blender. Three minutes of that is you waiting in anticipation for the ingredients to blend. The other two is just you tossing everything into the blender. You could use a food processor, but a high-speed blender, if you have it, takes the cake. It not only eviscerates the ingredients, but in the three minutes, it also warms it too. And that, my friends, is killing two birds with no, not quite a vegan idiom. So how about it's a hole in one? Yeah, that my friends is a hole in one.
I'm a bit embarrassed to say this, but when I was younger, I used to microwave my salsa. I think what's more embarrassing is that I, I didn't taste salsa until I was like 18. You know, at that point, most people are like excited to go off into the world or, you know, go to college or drive a car. Here I am, almost 20 years old, finally navigating the world of Tostitos jarred salsa. I know I'm judging a book by its cover, but it looked like it needed to be microwaved. At this point in my life, I've tried a ton of salsas and I much rather the fresh stuff. This corn salsa was my take on Chipotle's version. You hear that Chipotle? I'm coming for you. Please don't sue me. This recipe can also be made in five minutes and be good, but also kind of average, like some people. I won't mention any names. To set this recipe apart, I started off roasting the poblano pepper. I'm sorry, I don't have this set up to show you how to do that, but you know, one day I will. And it's gonna be your fault because you take care of me and I love you for that. But till then, I could at least describe it, right? You're gonna need a stove that has an open flame. And what you do is just add your pepper right on top of that and crank the flame to on. Using some tongs, you're just going to keep rotating the pepper until all sides are charred. Once it's done, you toss it in some foil and you close it up, and that's gonna roast the inside of the pepper. A few minutes later, you're pretty much done. All you need to do at this point is get all the charring off and you do that under cold water. And for the most part, it kinda just washes off. Just a little bit of help with your fingertips. I also roast the corn, and you could do that on an open flame as well but I like to do it in a skillet. The downside to roasting corn on an open flame is that the kernels are going to release the natural sugars and starches right onto the cob. So you, when you go to finally cut your kernels off of that cob, you're just losing some of that goodness because it stays on the cob rather than with the rest of the kernels. Fresh corn is the best. So if you're making this in the off season, go for the frozen stuff because that's preserved at its top peak freshness. Every recipe we made here is a make ahead the night before kind of recipe, except for this one, because brown guac will make you think twice about what the heck is it you made the night before and sat in that fridge. Growing up in a Jamaican household, avocados were called pears. I can vaguely remember my introduction to understanding that avocados and pears are actually the same thing. I was at a friend's house and he told me not to turn down anything that his grandma offered. 
And all I could think is, man, I'm such a picky eater though. Of course, she asked, are you allergic to avocados? <laughs> Heck yeah, all day, <laughs> what? I had no idea they were the same. And looking back on it, I kind of want to apologize. No swaps in this recipe, literally just tips. First one, if you haven't made guacamole before, it is certainly something you need to plan for. Have you ever tried to peel and or smash a not ripe avocado? You would have an easier time teaching a five-year-old how to drive a car in reverse. A great man once said, the best guacamole is all about timing. I forget who said that. I wouldn't make any swaps to this recipe, but there are some tips and tricks that you could use to make yours, you know, top notch. Make sure you use red onions. They are pretty sharp and spicy in comparison to like, you know, their cousins. They also have a really good snap, but what you can do is add them into ice water before adding them like into your recipe. That even goes to like, if you're doing a salad with red onions in it and the crunch on the onions are so satisfying. We use both a lemon and a lime in the recipe. And while you may be tempted to just use one, using them both gives such a twist. It's almost like the chef's kiss that you try to crack when you get home, when you try to replicate it, and you just can't. But once you taste it and it hits you, you're like, oh, okay. I see now. Check out the description for all three recipes that are linked over at my website. If you're looking for more recipe ideas, check out one of the two videos that I have linked here. I'll catch you next Sunday, and until then, believe in good. Peace. Yeah. <laughs>